and yet he never reaches the end. Uh, so what to speak of us, how could we ever reach the end of glorifying the Lord? And that's why we speak all these classes. That's why we uh, give so many uh, transcendental literatures. That's why we always recommend that uh, people should study them very carefully because they give the meaning of the mantra. If you don't know the meaning of Krishna, how can you chant his name and expect to get the result? So uh, we recommend very highly that everyone should study very carefully with the aid of a dictionary and get the meanings of the words correct and precise. Oh boy. Um, we've been covering anartas. And um, so far we've covered the first two types of anartas. Svarupa Brahma, illusion about one's spiritual identity, and Asat Trishna, thirst for material enjoyment. Now, excuse me, we're going to cover the third category, Aparadha, offenses. Offenses are of four kinds. One is offenses toward Sri Krishna. Two is offenses towards Krishna Nam, the holy name of the Lord. Three is offenses towards Krishna Svarupa, the deity form of the Lord. And four is offenses towards the Tadiya Chitkana Jivas, the living entities who are infinitesimal particles of spirit belonging to the Lord. Now, uh, right now, Lord Krishna is not directly present or manifest on this plane. So we uh, uh, pretty much can't perform direct offenses to, to him. But we sure can uh, make offenses to his holy name. <laughs> I mentioned um, today... On the, po on the post. It took me more than 20 years to learn this philosophy well enough that I could actually chant offenselessly. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I had some difficulties with my god brothers and things like that that kind of slowed things down. But the real reason is that this philosophy is huge. It's enormous. It's a big piece of work. Bigger than uh, becoming an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. Huh? If you go to a school, you go to college, you get a four-year degree, well, you know, from our point of view, that probably barely qualifies you as a literate person. Uh, if you have an advanced degree, like a master's degree, then, oh, you might be able to get work, you know, a decent job as an engineer. But really, before someone gets uh, a, a good qualification, uh, they need uh, like a PhD. PhD, that means like probably four to six years of postgraduate work. Then, if you want to become a lawyer, in addition, you have to go to law school and pass the bar exam. And if you want to become a doctor, you have to go to med school and uh, internship and so many things. And by the time you become a doctor, you're, what, 30 years old, 32 years old by the time you become a fully certified physician? Well, I would say it probably takes 40 or 50 years to learn to become a pure devotee. I think that's, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty fair estimate of the amount of time and effort. I mean full-time effort required. Uh, because it, it, you have to learn how to chant the holy name offenselessly. 
Uh, and even after you get to that point, that's still only called namabhas, or the reflection of the pure holy name. Uh, mm, namabhas is, is uh, of two kinds. Uh, there's chaya namabhas and pratibhimba namabhas. Uh, the chaya means a uh, reflection. So when we get to the stage of anartha nivritti and we overcome all of the anarthas that we've been talking about these last few days and we actually uh, stop committing offenses toward the holy name. Uh, then we can chant the holy name at the level of chaya namabhas meaning the reflection of the pure holy name. Okay. Uh, this is the level at which spiritual progress, actual spiritual progress begins. Up until that point, we are simply cleansing the offenses, cleansing the sinful activities and their results from our mind. That may take... 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years to get to that point. And it is at that level that we enter the actual path of bhakti, when we become offenseless. Uh, unless you are born in a family of pure devotees or something like that, you have certainly committed offenses, you have certainly committed sinful activities. You are certainly uh, in a fallen condition and ignorant and covered over and contaminated and so many things. This is the material disease. So before you can actually chant the holy name, you have to become cured of this disease. Then you can chant the holy name and in a relatively short time, maybe another 10 years or so, you can get the result, which is prema, bhava and prema. See? Spiritual progress speeds up with time. As we become more and more purified, we are able to increase the velocity or increase the acceleration of our spiritual progress. In the beginning, it's very, very slow. Huh? I'm always amazed at how long it takes to actually get a, a good idea, good understanding what this esoteric teaching is. Huh? It's not easy and it, it can't happen quickly. If you try to do it quickly, you will fail. You'll make some offense and the, as I said, the, the guards, huh? the gateway to this, to this pure devotional service, this path of bhakti is guarded. There are sentries, armed sentries posted at the gate. You cannot get through the gate unless you're qualified. If you try to go through the gate and you're not qualified, you will be defeated. And you'll be, you'll be uh, chased away. I've seen it happen. You cannot enter without being qualified. And you cannot become qualified without being initiated by a bona fide spiritual master and going through the process of clearing the offenses one by one. Polishing, scrubbing, cleaning. Huh? Cheto darpana marginum, cleaning the mirror of the mind. And this is a long process. Don't expect it to happen quickly because if, if you do, then you'll expect to get to the higher levels of devotional service very quickly, but you can't. What you, the only thing you'll do is that you'll become imitation. You'll become sahaja, cheap. Uh, so uh, don't fall down on account of having a wrong expectation. This is a long process. It has to be that way because our minds are filled with so many impressions of material quality. 
So we have to create many, many, many impressions of spiritual quality in order to counteract them. You see? So that is uh, the offenses in the matter of chanting the holy name. And then there are the offenses in uh, toward the deity form of the Lord. Uh, the deity form is Krishna himself. Well, you're going to say, how can a form made of material elements be equal to the Lord? Uh, well, it's equal to the Lord because he says it is. He himself is transcendental. Uh, and anything that is related to him, like his name, his form, his philosophy, his pastimes, his devotees, his temple, his service, his worship, 